up the day to you. Today's lesson is 11.4, area of kites and related figures. A related figure to a kite would be something like a, a rhombus or of sorts. All right. If you don't know the formula for a kite, we are going to derive it. Okay. And remember, diagonals are perpendicular because they have a perpendicular bisector. One diagonal bisects the other. So in our formula here, or in a, sorry, in our picture here, you can look at it. We know this is perpendicular. These are being bisected. I label things as A and C. Those are different lengths. And then B would be the same because that's the piece being bisected. Well, what do you notice is that over here, you can figure out the area of this top triangle. I'll put it in blue. So the area of this top triangle is half base, which is 2B times the height of A. Okay. And the triangle underneath, which I'll put in green down here, has the area of 1 half base is 2B times the height of C. Okay. Well, if we simplify this, we know to find the area of the kite, we would add both of these. So they both have a half in common. So I can pull out a half and a 2B, because that's what they both have in common. What's left over if I pull out that from here? I get uh, AC and then a plus sign. And from here, a half, I get the C. So this is the area formula. But wait a second. What are these? 2B is what? B and B. 2B is one of the diagonals times, because that's what operations here, A plus C. A plus C is the length of the other diagonal. So what's the area formula for a kite? One half diagonal one times diagonal two. The other figure is the rhombus. The rhombus also has the area formula for one half diagonal one times diagonal two or the rhombus has the base times the height, which we learned from unit 11.1. Questions? No? Let's proceed on, as Mary Poppins would do in the movie. She says, let's go fly a kite up where, you know, you could sing along. All right, so here we go. So we look at this, it says find the area of the kite. We know the formula, write it down first. One half diagonal one times diagonal two. But we know it's a perpendicular bisector. So this piece is congruent to this piece. I, would, I don't know either one of those. So I call one of them X, I'll call the other one X. All right, what do you notice here? This is back from 9.3, whether you like that section or not. This triangle right here is a right triangle. This line is an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. So what rule do you use? You use the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse rule, meaning you're going to be setting up a proportion. What is the shared side between the three triangles, small, medium, and large one? Oop, it's the side in between. So that'll go in spot two and spot three. The base of the small one, because that's what we're comparing, to the base of the medium one. And then we cross multiply to figure out that the missing piece is plus or minus 6. But can this length be negative? Nope. So the answer is just 6. So now we know this piece is 6. This piece is 6. Can we find the area? Sure can. One diagonal was 3 and 12, which makes 15. The other diagonal is 6 and 6, which is 12. Multiply it together, take half of that. Final answer is 90, and once again, we put units squared. Yes, you will need to know the altitude of hypotenuse rule for the quiz, test, final, rest of the school year, and so on. Moving on, number two, find the area of the kite once again. Okay, well, what do we know? It's a perpendicular bisector. We know the formula, the area formula is 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. We know it bisects, so these 
are the two congruent ones. So we got 12 and 12. So we know one of the diagonals is 24. We need to find the other one. Well, let's look at it. I see a right triangle right here. We're not using the outside hypotenuse rule because there's no right angles in these corners in this question. But what can we do? We look at it and we say, oh, Pythagorean theorem. 13 squared is equal to 12 squared plus x squared. Or those of you that love your triangles, it's a blank 12, 13, which ends up being 5 for this top one. And the bottom one underneath it here, I see a side of 15. I see a side of 12. Right angles there. So you could either do Pythagorean theorem again and say 15 squared is equal to 12 squared plus x squared, or no, it's a 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 3. So we got 9, 12, 15. So this length ends up being 9 here. Now do we have enough? Now we could jump into our formula. We got 1 half. Diagonal 1 is 12 and 12, which you said was 24. Diagonal 2 is 9 and 5, 14. Multiply it. Final answer, 168 units squared. And that is your final answer. Lock it in. Question 3. The rhombus with a perimeter of 68 and one of the diagonals of 16. We want to find the area of the rhombus. Okay. Well, we said it's a related figure to the kite. So it has two different formulas. The rhombus, you can either find the area, once again, I'm pointing this out, as 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Or the other way is base times height. Okay. Depending on what they give you is the, which formula I would use. If they give you a diagonal in the rhombus, use this formula right here. If they give you the height to the rhombus, use this formula here. Okay, so in this case, they're giving you that one of the diagonals is 16. So if I draw a picture like I was telling you to right here, we know that each side is congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular and bisect each other. One of the diagonals was 16, so we got 8 and 8. We knew that the perimeter was 68. There's four sides, and they're all congruent, so that's 17 apiece. So 17 all the way around each side. Okay. So then what can we do? We can now say we can either do Pythagorean theorem or know that uh, this is a 8 blank 17 triangle, and the answer is 15. So now we know that this side is 15 and 15, so we can find the area of the rhombus. Rhombus is half. Diagonal 1 is 16. Diagonal 2 is 15 and 15. 30. And your final answer is 240 units squared. The next question says, now find the height of the rhombus. Well, all you know from the rhombus, if you were to draw it with the base down, is that the base is 17. Each side was 17. I told you not to use the slanting side for it. You can't do that. You have to use the height that goes straight up and down, which is perpendicular to the base. So right now, I don't know what's going on. But what did we learn from A? We learned from A that the area was 24. And we know that there's two formulas. So why can't we say area equals base times height? Area is 240. That's not going to change. The numbers are not changing. The base is 17. Can I figure out the height? Sure can, because what are you going to do? You're going to divide by 17. And the height is approximately 14.12, or 14 and 2 seventeenths. Either answer would be accepted. Make sure you're rounding to the nearest hundredth like we've been doing um, in this unit. We're doing all right, need to take a break. If you do, and you need to take a break, like the Nintendo Wii tells you, pause this, go get some water, take a quick break, and then come back for the last one because it's going to be a challenge. Number four, find the area of the kite. Draw a line in to draw your perpendicular bisector inside. 
what happens is, is this 60 degree angle just broke up into 30 and 30. This 90 degree angle broke up into 45 and 45. So what I notice is that these triangles over here are 45, 45, 90. These triangles on the right are 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay. We want to find the area of the kite. So once again, we need the formula 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Okay. The only numbers I see is over here. So what we can do is we can look at this and say, okay, we have this triangle over here, which is a 45, 45, 90. The 4x ends up being across from the 90, so that's the x root 2 side. These sides would be the x and x. So if we set 4x equal to x root 2, divide by root 2, right? And then we can't leave it there, so we multiply top and bottom by root 2. So we get 4 root 2 over 2, which is going to be the, the piece that you, you need. Okay, so what did we say? We ended up with 2 root 2x. So what spots are 2 root 2x? Let's highlight them. This would be 2 root 2x. This would be 2 root 2x. This side would be 2 root 2x because those are all connected to the 45, 45, 90. Now when we look at this triangle over here, we see across from the 30, we know is four, uh, 2 root 2x. So then what we do is we can say, okay, wait a second. We need to find the, um, the 90 side, or no, no, sorry. We need the 60 side, which is over here. And that's the x root 3 side. So we put 2 root 2x in for the x root 3. Multiply these out, and what do you get? You end up with 2 root 6 for this length right here. So we have one diagonal, which is 2 root 2x and 2 root 2x. So you add that up, that's 4 root 2x for diagonal 1. And the other diagonal is 2 root 2x plus the other diagonal, which is 2 root 6 x. Okay, and we're taking half of that. Well, what do we do? We try and figure this out from here. So to finish it up, what I would do to make things easier, I would take half of this. So this would be 2 root 2x, and then we're multiplying by 2 root 2x plus 2 root 6x. So basically distribute this, and 2 root 2 times 2 root 2, that's 4 root 4x squared, so in other words, that's 8x squared, and then plus 2 root 2 times 2 root 6, that's 4 times root 12, and breaking up root 12 is 4 and 3, so you can pull out a 2, and that makes this as 8 root 3x squared. So you can leave your answer as 8x squared plus 8 root 3x squared unit squared, or take out an x squared, and leave it as 8 plus 8 root 3 units squared. I know it's challenging because the x was in there. If the x wasn't in there, it would still be the same thing with the numbers. It's meant to be challenging. Good luck to you. We will see you tomorrow in class.